Hey, this is Chuck with BMW Blog, and in this video, I'm gonna show you the underside of the BMW iX. This is BMW's only pure electric platform, meaning they don't put a gas engine in it, they don't put a diesel engine in it, you can only get it electric. And BMW's other pure EVs, the BMW i4, the i7, and the i5, are part of their cluster architecture, meaning that those cars support combustion engine versions, as well as pure EV versions, and even hybrid versions. The iX is unique in that it is only pure EV. As such, it has some unique design characteristics and features that allows it to go over 300 miles in this version, which is at the BMW iX50. Got the BMW iX up on the lift. Now what's important to note is that uh, the, my lift here is a 9,000 pound two post lift and the BMW iX weighs a uh, whopping 5,600 pounds. So if you go back to the BMW i3, the first one came out just under 3,000 pounds. So, well, yes, this does have a much bigger battery than that one. It also weighs a whole lot more. This one also is the size of the current X5. Uh, and obviously the prior electric BMWs, uh, the i3, the Active-E, dating all the way back to their first generation one, they were much, much smaller. This is a much larger vehicle. So it has about 516 horsepower um, and produces about 765 newton meters of torque. That is about 560 foot-pounds. And it does that by two electric motors, one in the front up here and then one in the back. The, one in, the motor in the front produces about 258 horsepower, the one in the rear produces 315 horsepower. And look at how aerodynamic that is. That is so smooth. So it's like I've really never had a car on my lift that is that the underbody was that aerodynamic. Uh, other things to note is uh, BMW does use an air suspension on this car. And in the front, they have a double wishbone. Up in here are vented four piston 348 millimeter front discs uh, and on the back they have 345 millimeter discs so you know out of curiosity i'm going to probably just end up pulling one of these wheels off to get a better view a couple interesting things to note uh, the lug nuts are jacketed they have this little aluminum or alloy jacket here so when you they torque down they they tighten down so these are vented uh, 348 millimeter four piston brakes. So here's kind of the venting. You'll note these are not floating rotors. And these are massive brake calipers. Here's part of the air suspension. So again, you have a double wishbone front. So here's the upper and then down in here is the lower, and you can see the steering rack, and you can see the, the front drive axle. This car only has a couple hundred miles on it, so it is like spotless back up in here. It's very hard to get uh, very far back up in here with a camera, but... All right, so if you look where the front brake is, and you look at the front part of the wheel well, here's a vent that BMW put in uh, that vents air towards the brake. Uh, towards the brake to help keep the brakes cool. Very nice. You can see some, you can see some airflow uh, things in the wheel well. Very smooth, plasticky wheel well. And again, you just note how absolutely everything is so aerodynamic. I mean, there's nothing really sticking out other than the the right here. And this this is to help direct airflow around the front wheel. Front wheel on the passenger side is off, but you can see on the driver's side, uh, this helps channel airflow around the wheel to make, make it more aerodynamic. The DIY part of me is like cringing at all the bushings that are around here. There's bushings everywhere. There, there, uh, there. Uh, they're up here. Uh, over here, so that's what. And then here's some more, here's the front control arm bushings. So people that own these in the future, when things start squeaking, you're gonna have all kinds of bushings to chase noises down from. So that's, these are massive. Look at how big that front control arm bushing is. That's massive. 
and there's more stuff for steering input. A little wire right here that helps watch the brake life. If your brake pad gets too thin, then you get, uh, you get a warning in that. That's where this tracks up in here. Cool to see that these are still, these still the same as they've been forever. Uh, so really you can see more, once you take the tire off the wheel well, then you can underneath the thing. Again, underneath the thing, all you see is just completely related to airflow. I mean, that's just so smooth. You're not gonna find that in any of the other, the i4, the i um, X1, the i7, those are all multi engine platform, meaning that they can put a gas motor, a diesel motor, or pure electric, and then they stuff the batteries everywhere. Here, the BMW iX, that's just, that's a big battery pack. So that's gonna put the weight down low in the car and improve the handling. And, you know, BMW did their homework on this and definitely, definitely made a great car. So we're back at the rear of the car. If you look, and you pull slightly right there, you can see some high voltage cables. You can see some coolant lines right there. You can see a drive shaft coming out here. So that means the electric motor's up in here somewhere. You can't really see it. Uh, it's incredibly well packaged again, and it's just sheltered from uh, the weather and it's sheltered from um, being part of air dynamic drag. So the drag coefficient on this car is incredibly good. I think it's around 0.26. Here's the back wheel well. Here's the brake disc wear cable, right? brake lines. One other thing I'd like to point out, because it is uh, pure electric, once you get on the inside here, you don't see any transmission tunnel. This is the back seat. It's completely flat. So like in a BMW iX3, there's going to be a transmission tunnel right in about this area. When the pure EV version, which again, BMW only makes the iX is their only pure EV platform, you're not going to find a transmission tunnel. Really cool to see carbon fiber reinforced plastic, uh, very, uh, very much just like the BMW i3 and the i8. And I love that translucent panel for the roof. And the last thing I'd like to point out is this little air curtain. You can see right there, it, it lets air in through and helps channel air in through the front and move air along uh, the inside. You can see here my fingers right there. So that's definitely a pass through and that helps, helps create a curtain of air that flows along the edge of the vehicle. Last thing I thought I'd show you here is how much this weighs. Now this is approximate because this is not, uh, you know, the best scale ever, but this is just under 70 pounds, so about 68 pounds per corner, which is a fair amount. But this is also much, much bigger wheel and tire uh, than um, the BMW iX. In fact, these are 225 5021s and the BMW i3 uh, are, they're just, they almost look like bicycle tires in comparison. Much, much, much narrower, smaller. Uh, these are almost like a traditional regular vehicle tire. These are probably low rolling resistance uh, all seasons, but they still, they weigh a fair amount. This is an aerodynamic wheel, you can see, and then uh, they do use the BMW electric blue however whoever put this on didn't match it up with the the uh, the valve stem which is one of my ocd -ism. so we'll fix that so there you have it that's a tour of the underbody of the bmw ix and it showed you a little bit of stuff that i could see underneath the wheel wells and uh, and also weigh in one of the wheels so if you have any questions about the bmw ix or the bmw i3 or any of the bmw electric cars please drop us a comment down below and as always, don't forget to like and subscribe to BMW Blog's YouTube channel for more interesting videos like this. We'll see you in the next one. Cheers.